Hello, Feminine Roadmappers. It is Gina here. And today on Feminine Roadmap Health and Wellness, we are going to be talking about aging and skincare. If any of you know anything about me, I am a complete skincare addict. I have been for years. I've been in the beauty industry for over 30 years as a professional makeup artist. And I've been a skincare specialist with different companies, and I have a serious, serious addiction. So my guest today, Christy Hall, when her, uh, when the opportunity to talk to her came across my plate, I was like, okay, yeah, absolutely. We are going to talk about skin, and I think you are going to love it. She is actually a board-certified physician's assistant. She's the owner of Skin Appeal. It's a cutting-edge medical aesthetics practice in Tucson, Arizona, and she's the co-creator of a product. Michael Christie. She's the author of Your Beauty Advocate, and she's here today to talk to us about all things aging and skincare. And I promise, if you've never been into skincare before, it is an addicting conversation, and skincare is an addicting habit, and it's good for you. So without further ado, Christy, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you, Gina. It's so great to be here. So as we all know, uh, we live here, you and I live in Southern California, where in, in Arizona, side to side, we're in a very dry part of the world, but a lot of women get confused about skincare, right? There's a lot of people out there talking about ingredients and products and things like that, but you're a specialist who has a passion for helping women feel and look their best. So I thought, what a great conversation to have, especially now going from spring where we're finally getting hydrated again in our part of the world and moving into summer where we're going to dry out again. <laughs> we go from dry, <laughs> wet, dry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we kind of say at Michael Christie, like if you can have beautiful skin in the desert, you can have it anywhere. <laughs> That's like, cause the desert is one of the most harsh climates to um, have great skin in. And, and I really like to teach, you know, how does the skin work so that you understand that, but just kind of a little basis about me. Um, I've been a, a board certified PA for 20 years. I've done um, cosmetic dermatology and aesthetic medicine for over 17 years of that. And I just really, fell in love with it. And like I was telling you earlier, my passion started when I was around age 30. I'm now 47. Um, I look better now than I did then. And it happened because my skin just was horrible at that point. You know, I thought I was doing everything right. I'd seen dermatologists. Um, I thought I was, you know, taking good care of my skin by moisturizing it and wearing sunblock. Um, it just, it just did not look pretty. And so when I had the opportunity of kind of changing professions from surgery into cosmetic dermatology, I jumped on it and I fell in love. Um, it was like, finally, um, the answers to what I'd always, always been looking for for myself. And I really kind of took that passion and I wanted to translate that to my, to my patients um, in doing that. And about seven years ago, I started Skin Appeal, which is my own medical aesthetics practice, um, where we do Botox and fillers and lasers. But I also wanted my own skincare line. I wanted to kind of take um, what I had learned in the medical realm of skincare with like the prescription retinoids um, and a lot of the harsh products that we used that worked. But I found that only maybe 10% of of people could tolerate those products. And then we have the over-the-counter kind of natural skincare products that we, you know, they have nice ingredients, but you don't really see a dramatic change in your skin. And I wanted to kind of marry those two together. And so that's where Michael Christie was born was that kind of in between a cosmeceutical brand of products that we use plant-based ingredients, but are very effective and really give us the results that we want to look for in the skin. So I've had the opportunity to try your Michael Christie skincare. And like I said before, I have been a skincare addict and I've worked for companies that have trained me very much on skincare. But I would think that the average consumer really doesn't understand how the skin works. So why don't you give us a little bit of a breakdown uh, of skin, the layers of the skin and why it does what it does, why the collagen goes away and what that looks like on the surface of the skin. Why don't you just give us a little bit of the medical background to skin? 
Absolutely. And I love that you approach skin in the same way that I do. Um, because I think, you know, over the years, big beauty marketing has done a really fantastic job of confusing everyone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, all you need is the perfect moisturizer and you'll be the fountain of youth. Um, or you really need to know your skin type and really delve deep into that skin type to really figure out how does your skin work. Well, we basically all have skin and it all works the same. <laughs> it doesn't matter what skin type you have. Have. You may have certain skin conditions like more oily skin or naturally more dry skin or rosacea or, or, or acne, but the basis of that skin functioning is the same for all of us. So we want to always make sure that we're approaching skin from that manner. And I find that if you really think of it in that way, then you're going to save so much time and so much money on buying products that just don't work and actually get products that you're going to see the results with. Um, you know, a lot of my clients come in and they have these cabinet fulls of products that they buy, they use for a week or two, and then they stuff it away. So I mean, it, most of you, if you probably look in your cabinet, you may have that. And now that we're on quarantine, this is a good time to clean out all of that stuff <laughs> um, with that. So the way that I approach um, skincare is to kind of teach everyone what are the basic needs. So we say at Michael Christie, and if you go to our website, you can kind of read all about this, but there's four basic needs. We need to cleanse our skin. We need to exfoliate the skin, which is your skin's natural exfoliation process. This is not a scrubbing off of the skin. It's actually to make the skin do it itself. We need to stimulate collagen. Collagen is what most of us get excited about um, because that's what keeps wrinkles away and that's what keeps the skin firm as you get older. And then we need to protect the skin from the environment. So any ingredient or any product that you're using needs to kind of go on the skin to create those basic needs and we need to hit those needs every day. So I like to use the analogy of, you know, like you brush your teeth every day. That's the same as doing your skincare every day. And then you may go to the dentist a couple times a year and have your teeth polished. That's equivalent to maybe doing a, a facial or a chemical peel. Um, and then sometimes we need deeper dental work like crowns or root canals or cavities and things like that. That may be equivalent to kind of doing your fillers and your Botox and kind of getting underneath the skin and doing those kind of things. So, you know, really approaching the skin um, and hitting those uh, four steps. So, you know, I can go into detail about, you know, cleansing the skin. You know, how do you pick a cleanser that's going to be good for your skin? Uh, number one, we want to stay away from ingredients like uh, sulfates or things that are going to super dehydrate the skin. The purpose of cleansing the skin is not to suck all of the moisture out of your skin so you feel squeaky clean. It's actually just to remove the dirt and the grime and the makeup um, from the skin. And you shouldn't need to double cleanse your skin. That's kind of a new trendy thing as well. Um, a good I was like, what are they talking about? That's me, a new thing I realized. It's kind of strange. Yeah. To me, it's, um, you know, if you have a good cleanser, it should remove your makeup thoroughly. Um, and you shouldn't feel like you, you know, stripped all the oils out of your face and your skin's going to crack like the desert floor. Um, but uh, with that, so with cleansers, um, we use in Michael Christie, we use our coconut based uh, foaming um, agents to really kind of hydrate the skin at the same time while cleansing it. And I find um, if you just use your fingers to wash your face, you know, in a circular motion, your cleanser should be safe enough that you can get into your lashes and remove any eye makeup that you have on. But if you just do that for a good 30 to 60 seconds, you should be clean. Um, and uh, you shouldn't really need to, uh, you know, use a second cleanse to remove that. You shouldn't need to use makeup removers. Um, your cleanser should be able to do all of that for you. Um, and so I like simplicity. I'm actually very lazy with skincare, but I like you, I love skincare and I want my skin to look amazing, but I am not the type of person that wants to spend 20 minutes doing a skincare routine either. So <laughs> I like to keep it quick and simple. Um, and, uh, the way I formulated the products, we can do that. Um, when we cleanse our skin, um, there is a second step that I didn't mention. It's called like a toner type product. Um, toners can be very important. If you have fairly normal skin that's not like acne prone or rosacea prone or very um, 
irritable uh, and getting dry and sensitive, you can skip the toning step, but it is a good step to throw in there, but it's not a basic need that has to be part of your routine. Um, when we wash our face, um, certain cleansers, like if they have high um, sulfates or high alcohol contents, they can throw the pH of your skin off. Um, our water sources, especially like it's probably, in, I don't know about California, but in Arizona, it's a very high pH. You know, we have like our pH is about 8.5 for most of our water sources where your pH of your skin, a healthy skin type should be around five to 5.5. And when we start throwing that pH off, it throws the natural bacteria, which is called our microbiome off. And that's when we start to get these conditions. Um, so people like with acne, if they over cleanse their skin, they're only making it worse because they're throwing that natural protective agent of those, those healthy bacteria and viruses and fungus on the skin. We also get scared of viruses right now, but <laughs> they're actually healthy ones on the skin that we want to keep the health of that. So toner can help kind of balance that pH again um, so that we can get, you know, all of our other ingredients um, in the skin nicely and really help keep the skin very healthy. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think one of the biggest things, like when people one of the biggest complaints that I hear is like, oh, I have dry skin. Um, you know, to me, dry skin is just a sign that your skin's not in its healthiest state. And so we just need to get your skin healthier because if you think of your skin, if you have children, especially under age 10, or if you think back to when you were younger, you never had dry skin. And why is that? It's because your skin was functioning really well. And we need to get your skin back to that. So that's where that natural exfoliation process happens. And we want to make sure that we're doing that on a daily basis. And like I said, that's not a scrubbing process. Um, we don't want to scrub the cells off. We want them to turn over naturally like it did when you were younger. And so there's certain ingredients um, that can get into the skin and actually turn those cells over much, much faster um, so that your skin will then produce its own moisture again. Um, you know, so really dry skin is about the dysfunction and we need to improve the dysfunction not add more moisture to the skin, but actually make your skin produce its own moisture again. Now, there's a lot of confusion about oily skin. Having been in the industry on a different level than you, of course, but having those conversations with people about oily skin, a lot of them are using very stringent, astringent products, things that just like salicylic acid and things like that like they strip their skin so much or they're afraid to use moisturizer so it's like these two extremes right they're stripping their skin or they're using those coconut scrubs that are just basically like shards of glass on their face yes. <laughs> you know or they're like refusing to moisturize so let's take a moment because i know for me that was always the more challenging customer convincing the benefit of skincare is someone who has legitimately oily skin, the kind where they're glassy, shiny in a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about that because I know typically people dry out as they age, but some people get oilier. Yes. Adult acne. My mom got oilier. So let's talk about oiliness because that is a very confusing conversation for a lot of women. Yeah, it, you know, it is. It's, it's along the same, um, just kind of re-educating on moisture in general. Um, you know, so healthy skin, again, doesn't really need moisturizers. And if you're oily, you don't really need to add a moisturizer to your skin. So thinking about like, you know, what is my outcome? What outcome am I looking for? Um, am I looking for my skin to look more youthful? Um, you know, are you looking for it to look more dewy? Are you looking for it to be less oily? You know, and trying to kind of understand the outcome that you're looking for. But moisturizers for the most part really have no play in making your skin healthier or anti-aging. Um, it's more about, you know, getting that exfoliation process turning over faster because in the outer layer, the epidermis of the skin, uh, when you're young, the epidermis is really thin. And so in all of those little cells in the epidermis are lined up so beautifully in this beautiful little line that between those cells, they're producing the hyaluronic acid and your natural moisturizing factor. 
factors. When you get older, we start getting that huge layer of dead cell buildup, whether you're oily naturally or dry naturally. This is the process that's happening. And when those cells become disorganized, um, they're not producing their natural moisture again. So if we start exfoliating and turning that layer over faster, then we can thin it back down to what it was as a child, and then it'll start producing its own moisture again. So if you have a lot of oily skin, that there's multiple different layers that we're going to talk about there but on a skin surface we need to turn the cells over faster so that those oils aren't getting trapped underneath the skin to create blackheads whiteheads acne those kind of things and um, we also kind of need to minimize the oil production that's happening in the skin by getting your skin to produce its own and, and get it healthier so that it's not overproducing the oil so the more you strip it the more it thinks it needs to produce oils um, you know so over drying the skin, over stripping the skin is um, kind of counterintuitive <laughs> to getting rid of the oil production. Now, oil production um, mostly comes from kind of internal, like your, your natural oil glands, like what's stimulating that. And for the most part, and why it happens as you get older for some people, is our hormones, specifically our androgen, our male hormones, become a little imbalanced. And that can happen from dietary causes, just natural aging with our estrogen our progesterone going down, but um, diet tends to play a big role in producing too much oil from the skin. So people with adult acne or even teenagers with acne, um, we really talk about, you know, changing the diet. And what we find in the U.S. is that um, a lot of uh, animal products are loaded with all of these growth hormones, and these growth hormones stimulate our own bodies to produce more androgens um, because you're eating that growth hormone that's then going to make you produce more growth hormone um, and, and increase more oils on the skin. So really kind of modifying the diet to being more mostly plant-based. Um, dairy products tend to be a huge problem for um, oil production as well. And kind of minimizing all of those kind of animal products. And especially if you're going to do it, do organic and not um, hormone driven um, products with that as well. So, you know, it's all about just kind of uh, normalizing the oil production. Um, and that's main step is getting that natural exfoliation process happening again. And the ingredients that I love for natural exfoliation are um, vitamin A in the form of retinaldehyde. You can use a Retin-A type product. Um, it can be irritating for some people, um, but it is an, it's still a nice alternative. Um, in Michael Christie, we use retinaldehyde because it converts to retinoic acid after it absorbs into the skin. So we bypass the drying or the irritating effect, um, whereas is a prescription retinoid is just straight retinoic acid going on the skin mm -hmm. with that. I also love niacinamide, um, which is vitamin B3. Um, <clears throat> I also love uh, alpha hydroxy acid, so glycolic acid, lactic acid. So all of those really can help um, normalize those oil productions, whether you're dry or oily, and help uh, get that outer layer healthier again. Now, one of the words that is quite a buzzword, I'm seeing it in all kinds of products now, is hyaluronic acid. And I have a history with hyaluronic acid because back in the day, back, back in the day, about the time, you know, you were 30, around about that time, I worked for Estee Lauder for a minute. And I worked for the Estee Lauder companies for almost 20 years. And at the time, they had a limited patent on hyaluronic acid. There was like this window where they were the only company that could use it. And so we had tons and tons and tons of training on hyaluronic acid. And they did tell us at some point, we will not have the patent and you'll see it everywhere. And it's so, so true. Yeah. So because people are now seeing it, what product did I see it in the other day? And I was like, turned to my husband who, of course, has heard me talk about a thousand things, right? And I was like, hyaluronic acid, it was like shampoo or something. It was like something I'd never seen it in. I've always thought about it in terms of skincare because that's the world that I walked in and that's where it was at. So let's talk a little bit about that specific ingredient because I'm not a TV watcher or a magazine reader, but I'm, I'm seeing it. So you know that women are seeing it there and it's being touted as like the new miracle thing when it's been around for ever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so you got to love marketing, right? <laughs> right. I'm like, what do you mean new? I like... Right? And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, hyaluronic acid is a, um, a molecule. Um, it's a B vitamin that absorbs a thousand times its weight in water. Um, so when you think of moisturizers, we either think of them as absorbing water from the surrounding environment, which is what a hyaluronic acid does, or locking the moisture in so that it it can't escape um, from the skin surface. And so hyaluronic acid is just one of those great ingredients that does that. Now there are some newer ingredients and in most of our products we use sodium hyaluronate which is the precursor to hyaluronic acid because it's even better <laughs> at absorbing um, moisture into the skin. So I think another concept that people get confused with moisturizers is that it has to be a cream or a lotion. Um, you know, hyaluronic acid is more like a gel. Um, so it's more like a serum. And, um, and so kind of thinking of moving away from like, oh, I need a thick cream on the skin or, or a lotion on the skin to be my moisturizer. You know, a lot of serums are loaded with moisturizing ingredients, like all of ours, the, the, um, you know, the sea radiance moisturizer you have is very light and thin, but it's loaded with tons of moisturizing serum type products that are pulling lots of moisture into the skin. So we love to use like prickly pear extract, um, you know, you know, which is an aloe based, uh, it's a precursor to aloe. Um, we love uh, sodium hyalur hyaluronate, which is a precursor to hyaluronic acid. Um, but all of those are just kind of pulling moisture into the skin and they're in all of our serums. Um, you know, so the serums can be very very moisturizing and not really be that cream based. So trying to re-educate and move your way from thinking that, oh, I need to put tons of cream on my face to be moisturized. And instead of making my skin moisturize itself and then, you know, adding a few ingredients that can enhance that as well. Now, what do you do to help women who have um, difficulty with sensitivities in their skin, like rosacea and things like that. How do we address that from your standpoint, what's happening in their bodies that could be potentially causing that to happen? So um, <clears throat> rosacea um, and acne and eczema and all of those can kind of fall into these inflammatory skin conditions. And, um, you know, so we have inflammation happening, whether that's uh, inside the body mostly, um, but stress can play that role, you know, not having healthy skin can play in that role. And so it's all about, you know, like let's, let's kind of make the inside healthier, um, you know, clean up the diet. Uh, like I said, you know, mostly a plant-based diet, uh, mostly vegetables, um, non-starchy um, vegetables, uh, very little, you know, less fruit that's high in sugar, um, staying away from processed foods, period, gluten, you know, dairy, those kind of things. And just trying to clean up the diet and eat lots of healthy fats, um, you know, olive oil, um, coconut oil, uh, you know, almonds, those kind of things can really make a, a big difference um, in the diet. So starting on the inside, trying to do some meditation, trying to be more mindful. I know that's difficult, but we all have extra time now. So it's a good time to start <laughs> um, with that. But then on the surface of the skin, it's all about getting the skin healthier. Now for someone who has really sensitive, like they break out with everything, they get rashy, they get irritable. We have to move a little slower because um, most people will freak out a little bit if we take them too quickly through that process. Um, because if if I start turning your cells over faster and started getting your skin healthier, you're going to see peeling and flaking and might be a little red, might be a little itchy. We call it the detox period for the skin. Um, and so, you know, sometimes we can push you hard and we actually offer on our website, um, uh, you can go to skincaremk.com or michaelchristie.com. We have a concierge where you can talk to me or one of my, um, uh, you know, specialists in, in the skin, and we can kind of walk you through the process. But typically, we go slow um, so that people don't freak out with that. And so sometimes, you know, if you have acne prone skin or rosacea, and you start to flake or peel or you break out, you're like, oh my God, I'm reacting to the product. That's not necessarily always true. It may be detoxing your skin and getting rid of all of that old stuff that we need to get to the other side so that we have super healthy skin. So for someone with super sensitive skin or rosacea, we start with really, 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 really basic. You're going to wash your face morning and evening with a cleanser, like our purifying wash that's just really basic. It doesn't have any 
alpha hydroxy acids in it. It doesn't have any exfoliates. It's just going to be a nice cleanser that's going to clean the skin. Then we need, we need to make sure we wear sunblock every morning because we need to protect from the environmental change. And so with sunblocks, we need to have active ingredient of zinc oxide. I prefer ones with no other chemicals in them, just pure zinc and titanium. Um, at this point in time, we love the brand like Elta MD has a a few of their products are just pure zinc and titanium. Um, and uh, there's makeup lines like Color Science. Um, there's some other medical grade makeup lines that are just kind of pure zinc and titanium as well, but really kind of using very healthy, non-reactive ingredients on the skin. And then it's all about turning those cells over faster so that we're getting all that dead off. So if you have, um, when, you're, when you're a child, um, like 10 years old, your cells are turning over rapidly. So like every 14 days you have brand new skin, okay? Um, and so that, that decreases the amount of dead skin cells we have on the surface. So it's really thin. And like I said, that's producing nice moisture. It's keeping the skin really healthy and supple and radiant looking. And when you get older, the cell turnover process slows dramatically. So if you're in your 50s or 60s, that process is happening every 90 to 100 days. So we have cells dying and dying and building up and building up and building up. So we have this thick layer of dead skin. And if you want dead skin cells to be healthy, it's just not possible. And so if you have rosacea um, and you have like a hundred layers of dead skin cells sitting on the surface, you can put as much moisturizer on there as you can, but that's like putting a bandaid on a problem and not actually fixing the problem. So we need to start turning that over. So we usually start people on our um, vital A serum, which is our retinal dye product um, that acts like a um, prescription retinoids. So that's going to turn over the cells faster. But instead of you starting it every day, we might start it twice a week. Um, and so we're going to slowly turn those over so you don't freak out and get that peeling and be like, oh my God. <laughs> but we're here for you if you have that. Um, and yeah, because that's what, that's what they're afraid of is any yeah. kind of reaction. They, and that's the misunderstanding is what I hear you saying. It's misunderstanding yeah. what your skin is doing. Yeah. And having to kind of power through the tough season to get to the healthy. It is. And it's usually about two to three weeks of powering through, but we try and make it very gentle. We also have a moisturizer that I love. It's calendula. Um, it's our anti-inflammatory calendula is a, a plant that, you know, it's a really, it's a little bit more emollient than most of our moisturizers. Um, but for anyone with super sensitive skin, I usually recommend, you know, a cleanser, the vital A twice a week, and then the calendula twice a day to really kind of turn the skin over faster. And once we get them through about a 90 day cycle, usually the skin for most of those patients is our clients are very, it's very normal. Um, you don't have like that reactive uh, stuff happening anymore. And then you can kind of move to more of a normal skincare regimen. Yeah. I love how you're taking a holistic approach to skin. It's interesting. You've done a lot of the medical work and you've gotten really deep into the ingredients of your products, which of course I could totally geek out over. But yeah. I think for the lay person who maybe hasn't heard all of these things, really understanding that, you know, the health of our mind and our body, it's all connected, you know, it's connected in how we eat, what we're drinking, how much we're sleeping, how we're managing our stress. And so I love, I love to say that the skin is kind of like an indicator of what's happening. So if my I, skin's misbehaving, right, it's telling me something. Yes, absolutely. I mean, if you have you know, if you're not living your healthiest lifestyle, your skin is your largest organ. And I tell people, you know, if, if this is happening on the outside, imagine what's happening on the inside, you know, and we can't see that. So like, I think it's a really great indicator. Like if you're not, if your skin's not glowing and it's not radiant and it's not feeling great, I mean, it's, just, it should be a little bit of a wake up call to say, okay, what do I need to change? Do I need to drink more water? Um, you know, I think drinking, at least half of your body weight in ounces of water a day, preferably more than that, um, is a great, you know, kind of thing to, you know, your skin is 55% water. Um, and, uh, you know, our overall body is even more than that. Um, you know, so hydrating itself. Um, but if you're happy too, and, and this is another thing that I love, you know, because I like to make people feel good about themselves. And if you, I, I feel like if you look in the mirror and you have great skin that day, it's kind of like having a great hair day. But if you have a bad skin day, it's like having a bad hair day. You don't feel that great. So it's about promoting that confidence and, you know, the happier you feel, the, the more you glow. <laughs> um, and then yes. you kind of 
push that out into the world. And this world needs some happiness and, and love right now, um, you know, with that. So I think it is a great wake up call and, and realizing that your skin is your largest organ and that it could be an indicator of inflammation that's happening inside. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I think that if somebody's had chronic skin problems, it may be more difficult for them. Like for some of us who maybe have never really had major issues. You know, I get that hormonal like North Star thing that happens and <laughs> that's kind of like my, oh, look, it's coming because yeah. my nose has a giant pimple on the end. But let's talk a little bit about the breakdown of skin as we age and why women might be seeing a shift or a droop or a sag or a dullness to their skin. Let's talk about that and some solutions as well. Great. So, um, you know, that's kind of more when we're moving a little bit deeper into the skin. So the epidermis is all about that radiant glow and the moisture and keeping it healthy and making everything look really vibrant on the outside. The next layer is called the dermis. And then underneath that, we have the hypodermis. Um, the dermis is where our collagen and our elastin live. And that's where all the blood vessels are um, that kind of nourish the epidermis as well. Um, with that. So in the dermis, the collagen and elastin is when you pinch the skin, that's the firmness that you feel. And it, when you're older, if you pinch the skin on your hand and it stays standing up, <laughs> that means your elastin is not working as well anymore. Um, and then in really older women, they get a lot of tearing on their forearms and things like that. And so that's because the collagen is breaking down. What shows up on the face with that collagen loss, and literally if you're over age 30, it's disintegrating every day. Um, and so we need to make collagen grow and there's easy ways to make it grow and we'll talk about that in a second but if your if your collagen is disappearing what you start to see is fine lines start to form on the skin they start to stay there permanently um, we see our pores getting larger the pores start to dilate out because they're not held tight by the collagen the elastin layer and then we get a little bit of sag in the skin now the sag in the skin is not mostly collagen loss, it's mo mostly underlying support structure loss, okay? And this is where I think it's really important for people to understand what they're looking for in knowing that what the limit of a skincare product can do, okay? Um, because collagen loss will cause a little bit of sag, but bone fat and muscle loss is what's going to create the major sag, like the under eye circles, the deep folds around the mouth, the jowls happening, the loose neck. That's not a skin problem. It's an underlying support structure problem. So we lose the bone and the fat and the muscle, um, and then your skin doesn't shrink with it. It's kind of like a balloon that's deflating the, the skin on the out, or the balloon becomes kind of wrinkly because it's not filled with air anymore. Think of the air as your bone and your fat and your muscle underneath the skin and as it disappears and it disappears on everyone this is normal aging it starts in your 20s and only gets worse every decade after that and um, with that uh, if you look at a picture of yourself when you're 15 years old, we have really round faces. Our, our cheeks are really plump and round. And when we lose our baby fat in our 20s, that's the beginning of aging. So when we start losing that baby fat, we lose it through the lateral cheeks. Um, we start to lose it underneath the eyes. And so that just makes the skin kind of gradually fall down. We start to look more tired underneath the eyes. We get deeper folds here. We get jowls happening. And so you can't fix those problems by working on the skin because it's not a skin problem. So you can put all the creams in the world underneath your eyes to treat dark circles, but it's not going to fix it because you're working on the wrong layer. Okay. Um, the same with lasers, you know, lasers kind of come into play and I, and I love lasers for that deeper collagen stimulation on the skin. And some, if you've had a lot of sun damage in the past and you have really deep wrinkles, um, or you have really deep redness or a lot of brown pigmentation, then lasers are a really great way to kind of amp up and treat all of those things and then keep your skin super healthy beyond what a skincare product can do. So I like to, for you to really understand what's the limitation of a skincare product. Um, you know, your skin can definitely look bright, bright and radiant and beautiful. And we want to keep that collagen strong, but sometimes we got to get a little deeper in the skin. So if you're starting to get that sag underneath the eyes and the downfall of the face, that's where your fillers come into play. Um, and so if you really want to approach ageless beauty, um, and that can be different for everyone. You know, some people want to look the youngest they possibly can their whole life. I have a patient, she's 90 years old. I love her. She comes in with her husband all the time and they're so cute. Um, and um, I've been seeing her for, I don't know, 
uh, probably 12 years. And the last time she was in, I said, um, I said, so what bothers you? And he chimed in. He's like, she's not 20 anymore. And <laughs> she wants to look 20. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, um, we got our work cut out, but we can do that now. But she looks amazing. She probably looks like she's 65 and she's 90. Um, but that's her goal. Other people just want to look in the mirror and see a reflection of the person they feel on the inside. You know, like I'm 47, but I feel like I'm 30. <laughs> you know, I don't want to look in the mirror and see a 55 year old. Um, I look a lot like my mom. I don't want to see my mom in the mirror, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so that's where, you know, kind of moving into treating those deeper levels with fillers. You know, I know there's a lot of stigma that goes along with that, but they really can help restore and lift things back up. And if you, if you go to someone that really is very talented, like myself, um, it, you, you really plug, don't plug, 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 <laughs> I know, right. You, you, you don't have to look like you've had any work done at all. And that's the irony of it is, is the best work with fillers is like, no one has a clue that you've had anything done. You just like look a little more refreshed. Um, and then you really just don't have to age if you don't want to, but it's a different choice for everyone. Um, but I, I, I really like for you to understand what level that we can work on. You know, if you, you know, some people go and they spend like thousands of dollars on creams that are going to treat their under eye bags it is not fixable with the cream. Uh, we have to get underneath there and lift that up with a dermal filler um, to kind of lift that back out. Fillers like the Restylane's um, last over two years there. It's a really easy and quick investment and it's like amazing, like people love it. Um, but understanding, you know, what, what's the limitation on what you can achieve with skincare will really save you a lot of stress and a lot of time and a lot of money um, because it's, you know, sometimes you just can't fix the things you want by putting something on the surface. Now, how invasive is that? In case someone's afraid, can you kind of give us, obviously not every single procedure, but, you know, I've seen people who've had horrible bruising or things like that. So it, it can be scary for someone to have someone take a needle around mm -hmm. their eye. So let's Absolutely. talk just a little bit about the, um, how that works and, and, you know, how you help alleviate maybe anxiety about, because somebody may want to do it, but needles just freak people out. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about maybe working around the eye area. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's my favorite area to fix on people. Um, I think it makes the most dramatic change, but actually a lot of, um, we call ourselves injectors, um, don't do that area because they're not skilled in it. So you definitely need to go to someone that knows what they're doing and has a lot of experience um, with any kind of filler, I think. Um, you know, don't go to the group on where you're going to <laughs> Getting your, you know, the cheapest approach to your face is not usually the best approach um, with that. But, um, you know, we, what we do is if you look at the under eye and you can tilt your chin down and look in the mirror. And if you have that hollow underneath the eye, that shows you where there, there used to be a fat pad that filled that area so that you didn't have that sunkenness there. And so what we do is we put topical numbing cream there. It is the least sensitive part of your entire body with topical numbing. You barely even feel it. Um, you know, so, and then, you know, me as the injector, I'm really good at talking you through it. And, um, and you know, what we do is we put some filler in there and it lifts it right up. The fillers have numbing in them themselves. So it gets more numb. The more I do it, it stays numb for about an hour or two after injection. Um, once the numbing wears off, it may be a little bit sore for a couple of days. So if you like push on it, it might feel a little bit bruised. Um, that's just from me expanding the tissues. Um, bruising can happen. Um, some people bruise like black eyes others don't bruise at all it really just depends on your pretty much your genetics with clotting um, with that so we have like an anti-bruise protocol that we recommend following um, but you know for the most part if you get a bruise it's going to be there for a good seven to ten days we have ways of making it go way faster with lasers and we you know at my practice we do those kind of things complimentary for you um, but we tell you just don't have a big event plan just so that you're not stressed about it you know give yourself a good 10 to 14 days that you don't have to be you know, you're not having a photo shoot done. You don't have a big wedding coming up, you know, give yourself time just in case. Um, because if you're stressed about it, um, I think Murphy's law is you're going to have it happen. <laughs> um, whereas if you just to kind of chill and relaxed and, you know, you may not get much of a bruise at all, um, with it, but the good news is like filler underneath your eyes last two to three years. It lasts a long time. So it's not something you have to keep doing all the time, um, with that, but it's not really that scary at all. Um, you know, I'm, 
I'm good at kind of talking people through it. Um, we have things uh, like nitrous oxide that you can do if you're super scared. Um, but there's ways um, to kind of alleviate that things. But it's really like if that's an area that you want to improve upon, I mean, fillers are the easiest, quickest, um, best way of doing that in the right hands. And, and, and this is not even a surgical fix area. You know, it's not an area that you can have surgery on to quickly, easily fix either. For some people, yes, but for the majority, fillers are just kind of the quicker, easier way of doing it. Awesome. Now there's this humongous trend right now with lips. Oh gosh. <laughs> Lip lifts and all kinds of crazy stuff. So let's talk a little bit about lips, just in terms of maybe skincare for lips, as well as how we can keep our lips, you know, healthy, because it's something I think we take for granted, you know, not everyone wants full lips, but it is kind of a neglected part of the face. I think people worry a whole lot about their eyes, right? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about lips. So lips, just like the rest of the body, um, need the same things. We need to exfoliate them um, and we need to um, stimulate collagen production in the skin. So the lips are just much thinner than the rest of the skin, but they have the same layers. Um, they don't have the fatty layer underneath like the rest of the, the skin, but we still have the epidermis and the dermis that happens. They're just thinner. That's what you're seeing is the dermis is the red. It's the, the blood that you see underneath the skin. Um, and that's what gives your lips the color. Um, you know, so anytime I'm doing my skincare products, um, I'm putting everything over my lips as well. Okay. Um, and then you can use, you know, things that are going to be, um, more hydrating, um, to the lips. You can use like a beeswax, um, or like a, you know, some people don't believe in Vaseline, but it's still a good product to kind of lock in moisture into the skin. Um, we have a, a product called Crystal Eye Matrix, which has this kind of matrix that locks in moisture really nicely um, as well. But the more, some, some ingredients like in chapsticks are... Um, make your lips more dry. So like a lot of those menthol products um, can actually make your lips more dry over time. Um, you know, so just like alcohols in your cleansers or your moisturizers are kind of, you know, temporarily doing a fix, but in the long term, they're making it more dehydrated. So trying to keep the lips um, hydrated as much as possible with good skincare, um, making sure you do SPF there as well. So again, I put all of my SPF on the lips every day also. Um, lip plumping is, um, um, from people over age, probably 35, um, mostly just want to have a little bit of enhancement and not really look like they've had their lips done with fillers. But doing a little bit of filler can help kind of smooth the little wrinkles that we get into the lips because as we lose that collagen and that support structure, they do start to wrinkle up a little bit. Um, you know, so you can do lip fillers without being full. Um, you know, the girls in their 20s nowadays want really full lips. You know, that's just the, the generation differences on things. You know, I have filler through my whole face. I mean, my lips are filled, but they don't look filled. Um, you know, so that's kind of the goal is like making sure you convey what outcome you're looking for to whoever's injecting you so that you're going to end up with the result that you want and not look like you're done. Yeah. Now I do have a question about medicated lip products. How does that impact the skin on the lip? When people use like, well, I don't want to name names, but there's some yeah. medicated lip balms out there that people's lips, they say their lips kind of get addicted to them and then it stops that's, working is the, is the phrase that I've heard. Well, that's the what I'm talking about are those kind of uh, menthol -y ones. Um, Camper. That, yes, exactly. They, they, they're actually more drying than anything else. So they do a temporary fix. So then you feel like you have to put them on a hundred times a day. Um, so we use more, um, you know, kind of plant-based ingredients, um, in ours, uh, like one of ours that has calendula in it. Um, beeswax. Very calming for the skin. Yeah, we do use beeswax in our lip balms. The rest of our products are vegan, but that one is not a hundred percent vegan. Um, but it does have SPF in it. Um, we use a lot of aloe, um, the sodium hyaluronate, those kind of things in the lip balm so that all natural ingredients that are helping moisturize, um, but also protect and be anti-inflammatory. Like the calendula is very anti-inflammatory um, from the environment. Yeah, yeah. So now when you are prescribing a protocol for someone's skin and they you, would the average steps be three or four and then how long should the product last if you're using it in because it's not like a ton of product that you have to use 
because right. I've obviously been testing this particular product that you graciously sent me and I love it. I love the smell. I'm all about no perfume in my products on my face. This smells very um, fresh. It any smells of these, citrusy. Yeah. Any of the smells that we use are essential oils um, mm -hmm. and the essential oils are in there for a reason. You know, essential oils have a lot of uh, properties that are either antibacterial or calming um, or hydrating or those kind of things. So we don't put scents in our products to make them smell good. We put them in there to actually function. Uh, with that. So, you know, like I said, anytime I'm approaching someone's skin, we need to hit the basics. We're cleansing the skin twice a day. We're increasing natural cell turnover, which is using our Vital A serum in the evening. Um, we also have like in our cleanser, um, one of our cleansers has alpha hydroxy acids in it. Um, but pretty much we have our core collection, which kind of is easy for anyone to use. Um, this comes with five products. Um, any of our products, the way that I formulate them um, to make sure that they're, we consider them cosmeceutical grade. Cosmeceutical means they're actually going to absorb into the skin and they're going to improve the skin's function, okay? Versus over the counter, which may have, surface. A, may have great ingredients, but they're just sitting on the surface of the skin and you can't improve the function or the, um, you know, the health of the skin by just sitting on the surface. So if you put a cream on and it feels kind of waxy and it's just sitting on the surface of your skin, it's, it's coating it and it may prevent, you know, dehydration from, you know, water loss to the environment, but it's not going to improve the function of your skin. So the cosmeceuticals that we use, um, we have five steps in this. Um, I, like I said, I'm lazy <laughs> and I like to get it done fast. So any of our number threes, which are our serums. So I always consider those are your like powerhouse. Like those are going to give you your most anti-aging. So we have like our biopeptide serum. We call that Photoshop in a bottle. Um, so that's loaded with peptides and growth factors. It also has an ingredient in there that decreases redness. Um, it protects from environmental damage. Um, you know, so it helps free radical damage. Um, and it stimulates collagen production. Okay. Um, so, and then our other, um, serums that we have our vital A serum, that's our form of our prescription retinoid type product, um, that we use in the evening. Um, so that's our vitamin A, that's a retinaldehyde. It also has niacinamide in it and uh, prickly pear extract in it for moisture. Um, it also has algae in there that ha helps protect from UV, um, damage as well. And then, um, we also have, um, in this one, you get your C radiance moisturizer, which is a moisturizer, but we also have another vitamin C product called our vital C serum. Vital C is loaded with uh, vitamin C that stimulates collagen, but it also has like six different ingredients for skin lightening. So anyone that has pigmentation issues like uh, from sun damage or melasma, it can help kind of even out those um, dispigmentations so that we can get more even tone. So any of our number threes, which are serums, number fours are our moisturizers, you blend them together. Okay, because I like to make things easy. So in the morning, you know, we wash our face with our cleanser, you know, kind of cleanse everything, you know, with your fingers, a good 30 to 60 seconds, rinse it down. Then we have our toner, um, which is lavender hibiscus extract. Um, the lavender is very soothing. Um, it, it, it smells amazing. I love it. It's very hydrating. It has aloe and um, sodium hyaluronate in it. So you just spritz it over the face. So that's going to rebalance the pH and then kind of prep the skin so that when we put our serums and our moisturizers on, all of those great active ingredients that are going to stimulate the collagen production and, and uh, help prevent um, free radical damage and protect the skin and make it its healthiest state are going to penetrate at an optimal pH. So we're going to get more results out of them. So what I do is I blend together, like in the morning, the biopeptide serum. I use the vital C serum because I have a little bit of melasma. And then I also use the C radiance moisturizer just because I like the feel of it. Um, so I blend all three of those together, a little half pump of each in my hand, and then put it all over face, neck, chest, including eyelids, um, pull it down onto the neck. And then I do excess on forearms and 
and hands um, so that we're treating all of those areas that really age the most from the sun exposure with it. So I like to simplify things. And the reason that we can do that, so some products, if you mix them together, you're diluting the effectiveness. Mm -hmm. um, with ours, the way that we, in, we envelop each ingredient into this uh, liposome, so it's called liposome encapsulation. Um, and so that way we're ensuring the stability of the ingredients. So like vitamin C is notoriously unstable. So as soon as it hits air or sun, um, and that's why a lot of times it comes in um, dark bottles or it's um, super potent, like people ask the percentage, like it's 20% vitamin C. Well, the reason they do a 20% vitamin C is because at the time it gets into your skin, it's now a 1% vitamin C because it's all broken down. <laughs> so if we just take that vitamin C and we wrap it into that fatty molecule, it's gonna ensure that it's penetrating your barrier. Your skin's meant to keep things out, so we wanna get it in there. Um, and so it's keeping it stable, but we all, also can kind of mix it with other ingredients because they're all kind of into this little this little capsule to keep each ingredient really stable till it gets into the skin and then your dermis breaks it down and then it's going to be nicely absorbed and we're going to get all those amazing results it's basically skin food yes it is skin food that's yeah. what i like to think and i love you you said that i mean that's what we talk about is like it's feeding your skin the right nutrients to make it do what you want it to do <laughs> it's not about putting more moisturizer on and putting band-aids on problems to make your skin try and make it look better. It's about actually making your skin be better. And for me, again, I don't like to wear a lot of makeup. Um, if you want to wake up in the morning and look amazing, you know, this is how you do that. You know, if you have great skin, um, your skin looks beautiful. So I'm sure yours is that way too. But um, if you just have great skin and it looks really healthy, you can wake up and roll out of bed and it's like, wow, you look great. You know, put a little mascara on, you're good to go. <laughs> I do have to say, you know, I enjoy taking care of my skin. Like it, there's, it's just something I enjoy. It's, yeah, it's, totally. it's, it's almost like people, you know, it's like, I'm not, I'm obsessed with the way it feels. Like if I don't do my skincare, I don't feel the same. I just love, yeah. like at the end of the day, when I used to work in beauty and not have to do like full face of makeup, like today I was joking that I, I got dressed up for you. I did my hair and I wore a smoky eye, which I haven't done in forever. Yeah. I was yeah. joking. But when I used to have to do that every day, mm -hmm. I, I love to wash my face. Yeah. I'm like a nut about that. I'm like, it's so pretty, you know, you're like, oh, I feel pretty, but I'm like, I can't wait to wash it off. There's something about just like a clean, supple, like, like you said, I, I avoid cleansers that make me feel dry. And so, um, you talked all about that and we've talked about a lot of things and I feel like it's been a very comprehensive conversation about skin, the dermis, the epidermis. And so if somebody has any questions, if somebody wants to kind of investigate a little further, uh, consultation, how would they go about doing that, Christy? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm open to uh, consultations on our website, uh, michaelchristie.com, um, or you can do skincaremk.com if you can't figure out how to spell it. But <laughs> um, we have on the, at the bottom left corner is a, a little concierge, like you can send us your questions and, um, you know, we can kind of communicate via that um, for my medical practice skin appeal. Um, you can go to myskinappeal.com and um, we can do a virtual consult. You know, we can do this via Zoom or via FaceTime and I'm happy to kind of guide you and in, in what kind of treatments can be great for you. My book, Your Beauty Advocate, is kind of walks you through everything that I'm talking about. Like how do you approach the skin? When do you need to move to lasers? When may, maybe you'll consider doing Botox or fillers, you know, trying to help guide you to achieve the result that you want. It's about, um, you know, what do you want to achieve? I'm not trying to make everyone look the same. I'm not trying. I'm just trying to provide information so that people understand so that they can you know, spend the time and the money on products or procedures that are going to give them what they're looking for. But at a minimum, skincare is always number one. You know, skincare can be super basic. You know, you can wash your face and put sunblock on in the morning and wash your face and do vitamin A and you've just hit all of the major 
basis. Um, of course, I like to go be above and beyond the basics, and I'm sure you do too. I like, do too. <laughs> like great, I love great ingredients. I like for my skin to be as healthy as I can. Um, and you know, if you like, you said that if you're the type of person that enjoys doing a routine at this point in time, I you know, and we have extra time now. You know, and this is the time we need to de-stress. Use your self, your skincare as your self-care routine. You know, whether it's a five-minute routine in the evening when you're just really massaging everything in, you know, relaxing, pinching the brows, relaxing your muscles, you know, and, and kind of really take that routine, smell in the great essential oils that are very soothing to your soul and your senses. And, you know, take that time, you know, especially if you're now having to homeschool your kids and everyone's home all day long, you might need five minutes away <laughs> to maybe do that in the bathroom by yourself and like enjoy your, your time to really kind of nurture yourself and take care of it. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, we have tons of resources. I do blogs every week. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm more than happy to educate. I love educating. And, um, you know, from, for in Tucson, we do a lot of educational events. You know, if you want me to come to your place and, you know, do a whole educational thing, I love doing it. I mean, it's fun for me and, and everyone that comes usually enjoys it as well. Wonderful. Well, what we're going to do, friends, is I want to thank you, Christy, for sharing your wisdom and knowledge and helping to demystify some of the things that we hear in the marketing and advertising world for skincare. So thank you for bringing some clarity and uh, knowledge that's useful to my audience. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Jana. It's been really fun. So friends, what I want you to do is subscribe down below to this channel. If you look below this video in the description, I will have links to Christy, Michael Christy, her skin appeal, everything that she shared will be there. So if you have any questions at all, everything you need will be there. There'll be clickable links. It'll be super simple and easy. And please remember that your skin is your calling card. That's the first thing people see. You don't have to be like me and love all of the steps. You know, Christy has been very honest with us today about what you can do basically to feel good and to take care of yourself. Remember that beauty is from the inside out, like she said. What you eat, how you handle your emotions, how much water you drink, it all shows on the outside. So right now we're in a quarantine across the world and it's a great time to slow down and drink some more water take care of your skin, find some meditation practice or yoga, figure out a way to create more flow in your body, take some wonderful care of your skin. And thank you so much for being a part of our tribe and listening to this conversation today. Again, please click down below to subscribe. Please connect with Christy and find out how she can help you feel better about your skin. Anything that we do to treat ourselves always benefits those around us. So take good care of yourself, my friends. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care. Thank you. Stay healthy. Yes, please stay healthy and drink <laughs> a lot, a lot of water. Take Lots care. Of water.